Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and here we are in my upstairs room with the cats. And I've been chilling here because we've been listening to music. I just shot the other video when I was tweaking the driver here. I still have the uh, tools here. And the cats were helping with that process. And now I'm going to share a few things. And uh, as you see, there are the... Hi there. There's me in the mirror. Uh, as I told you guys, there's a... And girls, there's a mirror behind the wall. I mean, in front of the wall, behind the speaker. Okay. So, basically, uh, I have the void pipe set up there. And Frank asked me, what do I do with the bottom of the pipes? Because they have those big openings. There's those big slots, which we could call ports, but they don't behave as base reflex ports. Some engineers got very angry when you call them ports. And... Uh, uh, anyway, he could just call them void pipe ports or slots or openings or holes or whatever. But basically, as they open, uh, the the back of the of the pipe is is flat, and and what a lot of people say is that put a curve in it, so that the sound will curve out and it will propel the sound out. Uh, I tried it out and I wasn't very impressed with it. I prefer it without uh, putting any, any curvature or any slant or anything in the back. And the simple reason for that is that when you do that, that takes away a noticeable amount from the free air volume of the loudspeaker. And um, really you don't want to curve out the, the air waves too much because the, the pressure wave that's bouncing back and forth and, and when you have a flat bottom that provides the support for the pressure wave to go up and down and now if you curve it then the pressure wave before it has the strength to build up by bouncing up and down it will get curved out and that's what I mean shunted out before it, it, it has the strength so I noticed that if you shunt it out with that curvature, you lose quite a bit of base strength from the bottom end. So what I do instead uh, to optimize the airflow, uh, and this one you can still do if you have a curve in the bottom, is put a record in front of it. And as you see, I'm not completely covering the opening. I'm, I'm, I put there so that they are slanted this way and they slanted out that way as well. Maybe we can we can just uh, walk by the cats. Come here, see, like that. Uh, so it's not covering it like that because this would bounce the sound waves back into the cabinet. Just put it like straight out so that the sound can come out towards the side but not towards you so then the purpose of this thing uh, is uh, to avoid the real problem with these openings with these slots is the, that they work in opposite phase compared to the driver and they work in a wide range of frequencies and you want the low frequencies to come out freely that's perfect because uh, this is what couples to the air in the low frequency range however you don't want high frequencies like uh, 500 hertz or a kilohertz or higher to hit your ears from here because it messes up the imaging and then you put this here those higher frequencies they uh, they get uh, shunted to the side so they are not coming at you directly but they will just get go towards the sides, towards the wall, bounce once, twice, three times and get smeared in the room and, and basically act as room reflections and, and this is the way, the best way to take care of the void by ports. So I learned this trick from my mentor, from Stu Ono and, uh, and it's, it's really perfect, you can put out <laughs> records here like uh, which you are listening at the moment or you want to listen or and it's just fun and looks looks uh, 
nice to me and it's just perfectly useful and uh, and the size of an LP is just perfect for this purpose what's happening here? What's happening here? Kintaro be nice. They, they were playing. Okay. Ah, there is the big boy. Okay, so basically that's what I wanted to show is how to handle the port for a for a void pipe. And and I think that that's all you need. I tried out all kinds of different things. This is really what you want. Uh and and that's it another thing that i used to do is just to put uh, something like uh, actually imagine this is a transformer i don't have a transformer on my hand right now but i used to put a, an inductor a choke or a transformer to the corner and that helps uh, a little well it did not make much of a difference maybe just like uh, almost like a infinitesimal difference a tiny little help just to tune help tune the cabinet a little bit uh, maybe break up some uh, unwanted internal reflections i don't know uh, i don't even want to get into why it helped or not uh, the main reason i did it because it did not hurt the sound when i did that and it gave me some peace of mind that the speakers won't knock over if I have a heavy transformer sitting in the corner. And by the way, that, that was like a totally unnecessary precaution because I had these exact void pipes when we had the big earthquake that was uh, 6.8 magnitude. And it was big enough to crack the wall in my house. Uh, I could see through the fireball after the earthquake and, and when the earthquake started I, I stood up, I wanted to run out to check out what's going on and I fell on the ground, I couldn't stand still, the earthquake was so strong and guess what, the pipes did not topple over. I had many things topple over and smash <laughs> including myself was toppling over but the pipes stand still so they are much more stable than you would think uh, then they are maybe here it gives uh, the camera gives an impression that it's leaning towards you but uh, but in real life I'm not getting that that optical illusion and I never ever had any problem with their stability no one ever knocked them over and they, they just don't knock over by themselves so thank you for tuning in that was for the ports and uh, and i will have the next report telling you guys something totally amazing because most people are saying that uh, full range drivers are not full range because they cannot give you base response and that's why you just need like a three-way loudspeaker and maybe add in a sub for extra measure. And now I can tell you guys, I've just confirmed it, that uh, I was listening to a little bit of that can dance right now and, and my hearing told me that, hey, I'm clearly hearing uh, uh, frequencies down to at least 25 hertz. And, um, and I got out my, uh, my iPad, which has an oscilloscope or app on it that shows the frequencies. And yes, it did show that uh, with the beat, the 25 hertz mark was going up and down. And, and it really did feel that the room was energized with very low frequency energy. So yes, I am confirming that even though I at the very beginning of the breaking in, it's already providing me in this cabinet uh, very high quality, uh, low frequency extension down to 25 Hertz. And last time anyone checked, even for a three way loudspeaker, that is a very, very commendable uh, 
attribute if it goes down to 25 hertz so if you think that f uh, f uh, full range drivers are off your menu because they don't go low then um, maybe let's check it again because if uh, 25 hertz is low enough for you then yes my answer is they go low enough and and i've been playing them loud and they energize the room so it, you've got that feeling that they just uh, you know they they provide the energy it's not just some poof and not just some woof and some uh, ports chuffing but it's uh, effortless and just beautiful fully integrated sound so please like subscribe have a wonderful day bye bye